Uh, hello everyone, uh, welcome to Reporting with the Legends and it is my absolute pleasure to introduce my friend Kaz with us who is the Professor of Medicine here at Nepean Hospital. Uh, Kaz is a prolific cardiologist and researcher. Um, I think you've been uh, designated as one of the future leaders by the oh, uh, National Research Trust and uh, just it's an absolute pleasure to have you here reporting with us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much Sam for having me. I'm so excited to be here <laughs> as well. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm related enough but then i think i still believe i'm no, a bit younger than that yeah. i disagree you're a legend you're a legend to us here um Kaz, i'm gonna ask you to help me out with a case that i did a couple of months ago yeah. and this is a gentleman who is 70 years old and he was admitted into the emergency department with apo mm -hmm. he's got a background history of some rheumatoid arthritis he's not on any active treatment mm -hmm. uh some gout some hypertension but most importantly also a uh, bioprosthetic aortic valve that was put in 14 years ago right now he comes in with uh, a recent atrial flutter that had been converted by a cardiologist, uh, and then this new APO requiring CPAP. Mm. And there was some concern that there was a, a, a prodrome of being unwell with maybe some fevers in there as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, a, a very astute emergency doctor thought that they heard some aortic regurgitation. Mm. So we brought our gentleman up uh, and we rapidly uh, intubated the gentleman and proceeded straight to a toe. Great. So... Let me start off maybe with the, uh, so I'm gonna start off first of all with a pretty dodgy deep gastric view that I did. We can sort of, I think it's, sometimes I find this one of the most challenging views to get on toe. Mm, and mm. often you can have pretty dodgy 2D views, mm. but I got a view that came through here through the um, aortic valve. And let me just start off. What, what, do, you, what do you think of this? So, so I'm right, this might be a trans, in no, this is the deep gastric, deep gastric, okay. deep gastric full oh, anti-flexion, okay. looking up at the bottom. Okay, so if that's the case, very good, you know, the acquisition. Oh, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's beautiful image. I thought this might be a, a, a transatlantic because we sometimes do it just before the uh, toes, especially in the emergency nice. cases. Yeah, okay, yeah, great, great. Cool. Yeah, very, uh, this is LBL. Flow. Yeah, continuous wave Doppler coming through that aortic yeah. flow. And I guess as soon as I saw this... 2.5. Yeah, you know, 2.5. I mean, with a bioprosthetic aortic valve, mm. even that might be a little generous, mm. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then we should think about a couple of differentials here. Obviously, the marrow function of the valve, as well as the hyperdynamic state. Mm -hmm anemia or any sepsis, other things, bits and pieces. Uh, yeah, yeah, and ticking along at a rate of 110 is Agreed. obviously, yeah. yeah, good call. Um, all right, well, let's continue and maybe we'll come up to the, I mean, we'll come up to this one just in the meaning of time. So uh, I tried to perform my toes in a systematic manner because I sometimes worry that if, just like I guess examining patients, if I don't do it in a systematic manner, I can easily miss stuff. <laughs> and so I guess that's why I haven't jumped sort of straight to trying to look at the aortic valve. And so after the deep gastric and the gastric views, I come to my mm. mid-esophageal four-chamber view. Mm. And I'll start off by, what do, you, what do you think about this one? So this is basically a good image quality of four-chamber view with color. And then one, before we jump into the color itself, but I noticed the LV function is well-preserved nice. or even hyperdynamic. So in the setting of APO, this suggests something, you know, the hyperdynamic heart failure. So it could be regurgitant. And if you look at the MR, it's not that severe to explain everything. Mm. So there might be another causing. Then we feel, look at the LBOT, they are with funny color, a turbulent color we can see. So I would like to see more about it. Uh. And then this is very good, uh, you know, the uh, tracing of the MR, yeah. CW, and then this tells us LV function is preserved because DPDT is very, you know, the steep. Mm -hmm. And if you, you know, they change the sweep speed, you can see it very clearly, but it's obvious uh, we has maintained. And look at the, just between four and uh, above five meters, yeah. up the, you know, the five, 10, 100. So it's normal for the MR. So LV function is preserved, MR, MR, and then there's something else going on here. That's my understanding. Nice. What should we have a look at next? I think the 
How about this one? So I, I had similar thoughts. When I saw that MR initially, I might just put these two next door to each other. Mm -hmm. So when I looked at the MR initially, mm -hmm. I was, I was thinking that oh, this isn't enormous, but obviously with concerns about the aortic valve and something going mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. and the left atrium, I find really hard to try and tell how big it is on a toe. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm often trying to look for to see if we've got signs of raised left atrial pressure. And so I went looking for. I probably got my left, maybe lower pulmonary artery mm. in uh, a pulmonary vein that's coming in there. Uh, yeah. And left uh, lower. Yeah. yeah, left lower. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I guess what I was trying to show here was: Have we got any signs of raised left atrial pressure? Mm. What do you What do you think? So obviously, S is much lower yeah. than D here, and yeah. very good good quality if tracing. Yeah, and then suggesting some so sort of yeah. raised left atrial pressure. Mm. Right. Cool. Oh, can I just go back? One thing I was going to ask. So I guess one of the other things I was searching for here was to try and have a look for diastolic MR. Because ah, right. I know that if you've got MR in diastole, that can mm. be a really good sign of that acute, yeah, a, a acute uh, raised left ventricular and diastolic pressure, right? That's right. So if you could, do you know, the increase the sweep speed. Sweep speed. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, and it's more easier for us to appreciate it because yeah, we can nice. see. Yeah. Then so here going from diastole, so from the end mm. of the T wave to the beginning of the QRS. Mm. So in this case, less likely. Less likely. Yeah. Good to know. Again, yeah. yeah, nice. Good to know. All right, let's give the aortic valve. Okay. Uh, so now you'll start with a 2D. Yeah, definitely. Black and white. Yeah. Good. So obviously we can we know this is bioprosthetic, and then we see some two struts at this. And then a bit of the yeah. exaggerated motion. So there's a strut there, and there's one strut we can see there. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And then one of the cusps seems very a bit prominent here. And nice, especially yeah. as it comes into there. Mm, yeah, yeah. This is a bit odd. So I'd like to see more pictures in this. So. How about we just go keep with the 2D and I'm just oh, going to show you yeah. the next. This is sort of the money shot, isn't hmm. it? Yeah. We can see some flicking object in the LVOT side of the aortic valve, as well as some interesting thickening of the bioprosthetic bio valve. And man, it's hard when you've got all that that's shadow right. coming through. Yeah, it's like, yeah that's right. Uh, so, just when you need it the most, you can't see it. Yeah, so then the cup techniques we can apply. So this is mid esophageal level. We can see this as a straight and a probe head. But if we have difficulty, I do two things, pull back and un, uh, posterior reflection nice. to see it and a bit deeper and up. Try to avoid these, you know. Nice, 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 nice. It's so almost like just avoid that shadowing that's coming through. So go one side or the other and look down yeah. or up. Awesome. And yeah, and then I think I just had you soon have this 3D probe and you have it, we can go a bit far and then get, get the 3D picture and look it down. Nice. Yeah. And do you normally do that from above, uh, superior to the valve or inferior or whatever works? Uh, yeah, it, it, there's no clear you know, <laughs> rule of thumb, but then yeah, try and uh, every case. Sometimes those patients different. aren't reading the textbook. They that's, don't, right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right, how about this for a money shot? Wow, yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously we can see broad, severe air here. Yeah. And then we can see the, lots of turbulence at the LBOT here and exaggerated an anti anti-grade flow in the aortic route. But the, if we go back to the short axis images, so now we need, to, most likely the patient has the endocarditis here, then a couple of things we have to think about if there's any dehiscency of the bulb yeah, or perivalvular nice. leakage or the, even the abscess and if the other valves have any lesions on that. Because now we have to think about how to treat it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and looking for abscesses. Okay, so I, I sometimes find it difficult with bioprosthetic valves and TAVIs because I know you've got this kind of apron that comes in. Let me just come to this. Mm. We've got this kind of apron that sits in there, and I sometimes don't know whether it's normal or not, normal or not. I mean, what are the what are yeah. the ways that you can try and tell an abscess from? So, right, as you did, like always use zoom image is a key here. Yep. And uh, th this, I can see very thin wall, which is normal for the LBOT and L LA. So I think this is okay. But then 
totally this is the blind area because of the artifact. So we have to combine transthoracic as well as trans as a nice, nice. yeah, multidimensional. Yeah. Cool. Obviously, sometimes we need to think about the limitation of echocardiography and, and you know using the CT scan to help. What us. limitations of echocardiography? I didn't know there were any. <laughs> what? No, don't tell me about limitations. In, in, it's this perfect. Is what, this is what I <laughs> always uh, say to my junior doctors. And then you, when you need to be, um, you need have to know the limitation of the, each modality yeah, yeah. to be an expert. Mm. So then we cannot, you know, overcome the physics of ultrasound. If the ultrasound can travel and come back, we can see the object. <laughs> Otherwise, we can't see anything. Nice. Yeah. Um, okay, so I might just do the one last thing in the meaning of time is mm -hmm. that I, I particularly find in the critically ill, we start talking about the severity of valve lesions and we go them very much based on the guidelines from the ASC or the Europeans mm. uh, and, you know, looking for everything. So from aortic regurgitation, we're looking for the, you know, the aortic valve, the regurg pressure half time and things. And in this case, when you've got someone who's ticking along at 107 with by prosthetic valves, it can sometimes be tricky. So that's why I love, I, I talk about looking downstream or upstream mm -hmm. to have a look to see what the changes are, like the diastolic MR. Right. And the next one that I, I went to try and look for was to have a look at the arch. So I'm trying to look for diastolic flow reversal. Mm -hmm. And so I just, the last thing I'd like to talk about is the trickiness sometimes I find with this. So what I've done is I've come, come along, I've kept it sort of zero degrees. Mm -hmm. I've pulled up, I've tried to angle down a bit and have a look at the arch. And then I put my pulse wave mm. in the arch, trying to mm. look for the flows. And so obviously here we're meant to be, I guess, seeing the systolic flow, uh, you know, the systolic flow that's here. It looks almost like it's coming towards the probe. I think I've kind of messed things up somehow, or is there something? It just, I was trying to get the part of the descending aorta, mm. Mm. and I'm not sure I quite managed to get that. Yeah, I think this is a bit um, unusual mm. waveform we see. So in this case, I have to repeat it, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. And I think that's what I sort of tried to do. And I ended up not being able to do that. So I, I think I got a little bit stuck there. So I ended up trying to look in different angles, yeah. uh, coming down into the descending aorta a bit further mm. down past the arch. Mm. And that's where I got this kind of view. So 90 degrees. Mm. So I've got the blood flow going away from me. Mm -hmm. And hence, I'm getting a, a flow here where the systolic flow then is going away from the probe. Mm. And that's why it's underneath. And I get a bit more of a classic pattern. And maybe mm. this next one, I got a bit of a better view yeah. as I was trying to move my cursor further as far to the left as I possibly could. Right, right. Then we do the bit of the increase sweeping. And then we can see, obviously, here, diastolic component. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I can move the image a bit to the left, yeah, like this. And this component. In. So at the end, there's so of 20 centimeters. Would be a good cutoff, but I and use that twenty centimeters uh, in in the arch, or use it in the descending. Is it the same for both? And uh, the, the so then if we talk about the historical things, it's originally from the abdominal aorta. Is it the thoracic thing is a new and okay. easier to get, and especially in the obese population. However, I rely, rely much on the abdominal flow uh, if we need to think about severe or moderate. Thoracic, and because of the three, you know, the vessels to the uh, cr cranial uh, part of the body, then it's not so sensitive for me. And uh, uh, this is m one of the bystanders information for me. I and I do not rely on much on this information, to be honest. Interesting. And then I would more prioritize the physical examination as well as patient status, because patient has the APO, and I would like to really, really know the diastolic blood pressure in this patient. If it's less than 50, I'm very comfortable to call it very severe. Nice. And, yeah. nice. and then if we can manage medically nicely, that would be great. But then if we fix the if two scenarios, but the worst case, the AR got worse. If we treat, uh, successfully treat the IE, there's uh, vegetation getting smaller, yeah, and then cooptation, less cooptation because the the guys don't always bigger. Yeah, if we failed to treat it, mm. it's more destruct, destruct, uh, destruction than or, or if it's bigger. 
Yeah, so no. both case it's going worse. Yeah. So urgent communication with the surgeon is another important. Absolutely, which is, I believe exactly what we did. Um, Great. Kaz, thank you very, very much indeed. That was absolutely fantastic, super useful. Thank you very much for joining us for reporting with the legends. Thank you very much thank for you very having much. me. Pleasure.